Shalom family, how's everybody doing? I pray that you're in a good place. I'm in a good place and it's been a while since I posted, but what I wanted to do was share an inner thought that I was having a moment of revelation, a moment of clarity for myself. And I believe that this is gonna be valuable for you. So I don't wanna waste your time. I'm going to turn directly to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13, because the thought hit me that my greatest responsibility is to myself. Your greatest responsibility is to you. Now, that may seem to be contrary based on even some things that I've taught in the past, principles of sacrifice, principles of selflessness, the principles of patriarchy and family and, you know, men being accountable and willing to give all of that, all that they are and all that they have for those that serve him and for those that he serves. But it's not contrary because this is why the things that you put forth, the, th the service that you try to render, the assistance that you try to give, that you try to give comes from emanates from, is projected from a place of security and a metric of personal responsibility that you have to yourself. That if you don't take care of self first, you cannot help others. So I want to read the scripture that produced this thought or further explains this thought uh, in a better way. First Corinthians chapter three, verse 13. It says, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. So the things that we are trying to do for others as men, I feel like men cannot be careless. Women and children, they can be careless. They have us. We may have our fathers, we may have another brother, and we have the most high. That's that's it. And that's how I said, you know, you may have that. But women and children do have a direct relationship where they can trust and depend on others, or at least they should. And if not, I encourage you to correct that. But the things that we try to do, our work, the things that we're putting forth, the services that we render come from us being committed to ourselves every day, moment by moment, second by second, minute by minute. We are accountable and responsible for ourselves. Now, I know that you hear me using the terms accountable and responsible somewhat interchangeably. These are words that are being tossed around a lot today. It's kind of really, uh, you know, popular language. But let me give you the subtle difference that um, responsibility are the tasks, the items that you have to do in any given day uh, to perform any given uh, uh, any uh, to, to perform a thing. So let's just say some of my own personal responsibility uh, matrix or the things that I look at are what time I wake up in the morning. Um, how do I study? Um, I look at my profession. What am I doing professionally in order to grow my business, to try to increase income? How am I? I said this earlier, but how am I studying? Am I putting myself in a position to grow in the things of Yah? Or do I think that I'm um, I'm set? I'm static. I know all that there is to know. Therefore, there's no need to change. And I know that many of you can look outside and see that things are changing all around you. So I'm responsible to set the time that I get up, um, the way that I interact and I take time out. I spend time with my family. I spend time with my wife. Um, it's important for me to spend time with my sons. And I know that it's important to you. These are just uh, items that reflect your responsibility. Now, the overall outcome, what these tasks produce is what you are ultimately accountable for. So you're accountable for your marriage. You're accountable for your relationship with the most high. You're accountable for your profession. You're accountable for whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish 
through multiple tasks that have been broken down into smaller manageable chunks of, of, of items, itemized things that you're doing. These are uh, items that you're responsible for. And all of that um, extends from your individual responsibility to yourself. You should wake up in the morning, tell yourself that I love me. Not in an arrogant, not in a selfish way, but do you love who the father is making you to be? Do you love the presentation now? There, there's not pride in this. It's just being firmly uh, uh, actualized and adjusted to who he has made you. You may have wanted to be 6'3", 6'4". Well, particularly me, <laughs> I did want to be 6'3". However, that was not in the car. So I have to look myself in the mirror and say, I love what the father has uh, produced in me. That whatever my height is, whatever my complexion is, whatever my hair texture is, whatever my eye color is, you got to love you. Granted, there's some things that you can change. If I don't like my my size, if if I've overeaten up to this point, if I've undereaten, if I like to develop muscles, if I want to get, you know, be in better shape, that's fine. But as Yahushua said, not one of you with thought can add one cubit to your stature. That part I can't change. I have to love that. I have to value that because I know that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And I'm not finished being made. You are not finished being made. You are not, the Most High is not finished with helping you become the greatest version of yourself. He's not finished with you. You are in the process. You are in the transition. You are in a great change in your life. And that change is because the Father's hand is on you and you are becoming what he wants you to be. It may not have been what you even thought or conceived within your heart, but the father has his hand on you and you have to love that process. You have to love what he's causing you to be. And that comes from your individual responsibility to yourself. We've seen people in many different aspects of life, people that may want to be uh, an entrepreneur, but you don't have entrepreneurial an entrepreneurial spirit. People that may want children. And it's like, that is the last person that needs a child. They're not responsible for themselves. They can't even boil water. They don't have the resources. They don't have the mindset. They, they too selfish. You know, any of these things, you can't help others if you're not sober. There we go. Let's start there. You're not sober about who you are and where you are. The scriptures are all throughout Ephesians so many times, uh, I believe it's in Titus as well, where he tells us to be sober. Young men should be sober. What do I mean by be sober? This, and I'm going somewhere with this, if you'll allow me. Be sober. Being sober, <clears throat> as it relates to your individual responsibility, to yourself means that you can, when you look yourself in the mirror and you tell yourself that you love you, it does not mean that there's not improvements to be made. Are you sober in your assessment of self and others? Because the Most High requires that his sons perform justice and judgment. We cannot be off. We cannot be exaggerated. We cannot be excessive even in our self-estimation. It's good for you to love yourself. But if you know that you are not, uh, uh, let, let, let's just say in, in, this, in this sobriety thing, um, sober, you know, is, you know, typically we use it as it relates to, you know, alcohol, as it relates to some, something that's intoxicating, that's impairing your judgment that's impairing your, your inhibitions, that's keeping you, or it may not be keeping you, it may be giving you permission to do some things that you would not normally do. And that's why we're told to be sober, but also sometimes our excessive um, 
inaccurate assessment of self can mean that we're not sober. For me to say this, this exaggerated thing like, oh, thing, I'm the best, you know, whatever at, you know, whatever that is. I'm, I'm the best. I don't even want to say nothing exaggerated because people try to use that against you the well like that's what he really believes so i really you know guard against that but even if you have a desire to be the best are you responsible for doing the work in order to become said thing even if you look at basketball if you look at football if you look at sports professional sports collegiate sports high school sports Individuals play on the team together, but that individual has to be responsible for themselves. They have to hold themselves accountable. If you know you need to hit the weight room to get stronger, to be able to shed those blocks. If you know that you may be a martial artist in martial arts, you have to be responsible for yourself. It's my job to train. It's my job to harden my body. As a boxer, it's my job to get in there to hit the bag, to, to, to work on my footwork, to work on my defense, to work on whatever that is, because I'm responsible for that. And if I'm going to try to teach that to others, I have an even greater responsibility to myself to know what the heck I'm talking about. So even in the scripture, the works, all everything that I've been saying is extending or is coming from the idea of the works that you are able to do by personal responsibility and those works that you are trying to perform will be tried. Your motives will be tried. The quality of what you're able to produce will be tried. That's why you got to be sober. The, um, if we go back up to verse 12, um, Shaul is talking about the foundation that a man is building upon. Um, and I'll read verse 11. It says, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid. It's already done. It's finished. The foundation. And that is Yeshua HaMashiach. He is the foundation. Who was he? You know, a tribesman <laughs> of uh, the house of Judah. He was walking, living, breathing instruction. He was Torah made flesh. He was the word of the living Elohim. He was a son. He was a son that did the will of the father. He was sacrificial. He was responsible for himself. He knew that when people were pulling on him a little too much, he would retreat into the wilderness by himself to get that inner strength back and that's what we have to do sometimes he was responsible so this is the foundation that we're talking about now listen to verse 12 it says now if any man build upon this foundation talking about yeshua gold silver precious stones wood hay stubble from this point shaul or paul he's showing a descending uh, a, a descending measure of quality, descending quality of things as it relates to the work that is being done by a man individually. He starts with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. So the sobriety component in that is you cannot have a, a, a false equivalence. You cannot say that hay is wood. You cannot say that wood is a precious stone. Even if you overlay silver with gold, it's not gold. It's not pure. And that work, even if you present it falsely as something that it is not, it will be tried in the fire. Listen to what it says. That even if you present something falsely, verse 13, every man's work shall be made manifest. The things that you do in private will be made known. It's going to be shouted from the rooftops. It's going to be made a known thing. So I always pray, Father, let the things that I've done in private be a testament publicly. You do certain things privately, not that anybody knows about it. 
your personal commitment to yourself, how you pray, how often you pray, excuse me, <clears throat> how you fast. The frequency of your fast. The way that you study, the way that you read, the way that you move in private when no one else is around. This is your integrity. This is your responsibility. This is how you are accountable to the Most High. It's easy to say, well, the Most High is my number one responsibility. That is a very, very disconnected religious thought because the Most High, he's everywhere, yet you can't, he's intangible. You can't see him. You wake, you get up every morning, you put your shoes on, you put your pumps on, your heels on, your dress, you put your, your camouflage jacket on, you put your suit on. You do that for yourself every day. What you do for yourself every day is going to reflect your commitment to the Most High. It's going to reflect your commitment to your family, to your commitment to legacy. That's why I say it always starts internally and it's going to manifest and be projected outwardly. That work, the commitment to the work will be made manifest. Every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire. Fiery trials are going to try your individual responsibility, your individual accountability matrix. It's going to try you to see what it is. And it should. Think it not strange when fiery trials come and try you. Don't think that it's a strange thing. Your work has to be made manifest. But if you have done the necessary work, you have prioritized yourself, making sure that you are spiritually healthy, that you are mentally healthy, that you are emotionally healthy and vibrant and committed to the way. Now, the way for the for the Israelite is specific. It's specific. I'm not trying to speak uh, along the cultural lines of any other people. I only speak from the, what may be considered antiquated, the ancient way of my fathers. And I honor them. I thank the Most High um, for my patriarchs. I'm thankful that I'm the son of William, who's the son of Daniel, who's the son of Freeman, who's the son of George. I stand on the shoulders of these great men. And because of my individual responsibility, I pray that I make my fathers and the father proud of the things that I'm trying to do, the, uh, the impact that I'm trying to make in the earth. And I'm convinced that if you prioritize yourself, that you don't try to help others before you're healed. If you don't try to help others before you are whole, if you don't try to convert people and you have not been converted yet, that's your responsibility to you, that you will continue to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the way of Yah and in the way of that foundational cornerstone, Yeshua HaMashiach. I pray that this has blessed you, family. Be responsible to yourselves. You are your greatest priority. Prioritize yourself. I'm not talking about being selfish. I'm talking about being responsible for the tasks that you've given yourself to accomplish your overall goals and then to be accountable for that outcome. If it's your family, if it's your growth in the Most High, when you commit to self that I'm gonna get up every morning, I'm gonna do what's required, I'm gonna do it. This is a, a product of my volition, the choices that I make, and then you will see windfall change. You will see a waterfall of increase in your life abundance and I'm talking about money. I'm talking about the things that you have committed to. Bless your family. May the most I be with you and strengthen you. I'm your brother Dawi. Until next time. Shalom.